Uh, this is the International Maple Museum Center. Uh, this museum was formed in 1977. It was formed by a group of local uh, maple sugar makers here from Lewis County. And the reason it was formed was to honor anybody in the maple industry, whether they be in the United States or Canada, to honor them for what they have contributed to the maple industry. This room we're in here now, it's like an old-fashioned uh, sugar house, maple processing place, whatever you want to call it, but it would be like they did it back in the 1800s or early 1900s, and there's some people that still do it the same way. Uh, right behind me is an old iron wheel wagon. It has a sharp neap on it that you draw with a tractor, but when this wagon was made, it was drawn with the horses. The same thing as what the Amish Mennonite would use nowadays. And they would use this wagon after the snow went. If you notice, on top of it, there's a hand pump. Most people for the old sugar houses, they had what they would call a bridge. And what it would be, it would be a gravel embankment and it would be higher than the sap would run into a storage fat inside the sugar house. If you didn't have that, you will see on the top of this tub there was a hand pump where they operated it by hand and they pumped the sap into the sugar house. After it comes in the storage vat in this evaporator, the sap will come into this pan right here. There's a float here, and what it does is the sap comes in here, and it goes back, comes up this partition, and keeps going back and forth, comes in the front, and then when it gets over here, it should be served. As the sap would boil, it creates foam, and this here, you would skim the foam off and take it out of the pan. Or they had the filters out. They had what they called a wooden settling tank. And what they did is they put syrup in this. If you can see, this spout is up about five, six inches from the bottom. And what they would do is let the syrup set in there for probably a day or two, and the sugar, sand, and nitro, nitro would settle to the bottom, then they'd draw the syrup off. And that, instead of filtering it. This is a square filter. There's tank, or they have tanks that have, that are square, and this is a different style filter. You would wash them out in cold or warm water, whatever you had. And a lot of people use these old ringers and what they would just put them filters in, in the ringer just to get the water out. Of course, after the syrup was filtered and everything, we have wooden barrels that some people put them in. Here's a wooden container that they put syrup in. Then they went to galvanized drums, and now we don't use galvanized drums anymore. We use stainless steel.
Okay, uh, in this room we have a couple different style of storage tanks and we also have a tapper here. When people would get sick of using a hand brace, they had a tapper here and this one here you would strap on your back and you'd hang onto the cable and you'd drill a hole in the tree. Two things were wrong about this. If you fell a lot of times, you might catch your pants with a drill and it'd put holes in your pants. And not only that, when every time you bent over to tap a tree, the gas all leaked out of this and guess where it went? On your back. Here on the side of the wall, if you, for people to understand, there's five different styles of maple trees. There's a silver maple, red maple, sugar maple, black maple, and a box elder. Now you can get sap from all of these, but the ideal tree to get sap from to make syrup is a sugar maple. The next one is a red maple. This here is an old style wooden vat. It's, it was a storage vat they would have put in a sugar house. It's made out of wood. Same thing with this. You had to put water in it, soak it. You can see the bands around it. Every year you'd have to tighten them up. And this wood was off. It, it was milled out so it would fit in a circular motion. This is a different style one. This is a big wooden vat. And the thing about these here is these little critters you see setting up on top here called hedgehogs, porcupines, whatever you want to. They're porcupines. They love to chew on wood after sugaring. They love to chew on rubber tires. They just love that. And after sugaring, when people would get done, they'd put wood in the shed and they would go in them sheds and they'd li live where you piled the wood. And then they'd chew on stuff like this. Okay, here we have some very old style cans. Uh, these are in the early 1800s. We have a jug here on the floor that syrup was put in. Uh, one thing I want to call your attention to, uh, this syrup here was produced in 1960 and it's still, there's nothing wrong with it, yeah, you know. And we have some here that was produced in 1890. Here we have a different style holding tank. Of course, they don't use these no more because this is galvanized, okay? We don't use galvanized no more. Uh, down here we have different hydrometers. What these are used for is to test the density of maple syrup. Now, most of these, we can't use no more either because they have mercury in them. Okay, here we have a different style evaporator. We saw the old one. This, this one here is basically the same as what we had before, only this one here has on top of it what we call a preheater. And what a preheater does, the sap runs into that through a series of copper pipe under this hood. And the theory behind it, it warms the sap up before it actually drops into the flu pan to boil the sap. And the purpose of that is so you could boil the sap much faster. Back in the 1800s, they made syrup. So then they had to have some way to keep that syrup all the while. And of course, cane sugar was in short supply if they could even get it all. So they use syrup for their sweetener. So what they did is they boiled the syrup down more and stirred it and poured it in. This here happens to be a mold and they made hard sugar. 
Well, once when it's in sugar, it will keep indefinitely. What you're seeing now is different sugar cake molds. Uh, this is for sugar candy. The molds they have nowadays, they're made out of rubber. They're like this. This is a model sugar house. Uh, it was built by a gentleman from Connecticut. His name is Mike Gerard. It actually was modeled after his own place of business. It took him approximately 400 hours to make this over, I think it was an eight year period before he had it all done. Everything you see in here, he made by hand. This gentleman here is Fred Winch, and he worked for Cornell, the University of Cornell, okay? And he was very instrumental it's starting this museum between Fred Wrench and this gentleman here, which is Robert Lamb. He's the one that purchased the building and donated it for the museum. <music> 